It's been a long time coming, but still I'm on smash. Never no breaks, I'm giving them all gas. Living for today, middle finger to pass. Also give it to the ones who thought I wouldn't last. Fake ass friends, never been family. The more I make moves, the more these niggas can't stand me. Smile in my face, but knowing they wanna ban me. Make up any lies so niggas can try to hand me. Tell it to the pen and telling it to the streets. But nigga, I'm in tune with the pen in the streets. No room for defeat when you facing a real low. I ride by my lonely, so I see behind the smoke. Can't wash one hand without washing the other. Cause I'm a real keeper and my motherfucking brother's point guard of the streets. Some plays I had to change up. Nothing stay the same, remember? Yeah, yeah. Tuned in to East Side Radio. East Side. Lil Bam, Jazzy, and uh, someone that really don't need no introduction. Oh, man. But we're going to give him an introduction with uh, Platinum before it. You know, a lot of people don't get the right introduction. You know, platinum producer uh, and DJ. For y'all that don't know, Mr. Chili Chill. What's up, Chili Chill? Yeah, yeah, it was good with y'all. <laughs> How y'all feeling? Man, you know, just enjoying this Sunday. Yeah, it's a hot Sunday, though, man. This weather been, like, stupid up and down. Like That's yeah. L.A., though. No, oh, yeah. no, no. It's, that's, unpre uh, it's unpredictable. That Yeah. Yeah, it's unpredictable on who controlling it. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's going to storm oh, Monday, tomorrow. Tuesday, <laughs> and then just go in the summertime. We hitting all four, you know, four seasons in a week. In two days. Wow, yeah. Nah, yeah. man, but uh, we are we, we going to be talking about uh, a, a lot that, you know, a lot that's done changed in the game since, you know, since you, since you started your, you know, your career. Exactly. On, on, on uh, up until now, uh, with your existing career, because you know a, a, a lot of people um, they don't understand what the whole producing aspect of it is, and even even DJing. Like a lot of people I see now, they 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 uh, uh, put them both together. Mm -hmm. Like a DJ is a producer, <laughs> or a producer is a DJ, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's it's not. So from your perspective. Can you break down? I mean, how did you start first off? Like, did you start as a DJ or I'm, did you start as a producer? I started off as a DJ first. Mm -hmm. And and what made you want to produce? Shit, just uh, from pushing from DJing, basically, because it kind of it kind of runs hand in hand, so I can kind of understand that. But yeah, it is a separate difference though mm -hmm. from the DJing. So, so how how long were you DJing before you? Felt like okay, boom! I want to just go ahead and get into producing, actually producing music. Man, I say probably shit from the seventies on up. Man, on up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but hey, hey, real talk though. I, hey, I was on wooden turntables and all that. Damn, realistic mixer. So it's been in you to do this. Yeah. And then when you when you decided to start producing. What was some of the, uh, I wouldn't say equipment, but what was some of the first moves you made where you said, you know what, this is something I really want to take serious? Well, I mean, from having the SP-1200 to SP 1200 to SP, you already know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Automatically from having that to mm -hmm. cracking down to when they came out with the uh, NPCs. Yeah, I, I remember when you had the MP, me, Dub, <laughs> Tunes, we had a... Incident when we came to his spot in Inglewood, yeah. and uh, I think I had on some blue. <laughs> <laughs> I had think? on something, yeah, and, and and I had to call him. We, we oh, me yeah. Aladdin, was it? No, Aladdin. Wasn't, what is it? it? Was me DJ Dub? Aladdin? And, yeah, yeah, me you know, Crazy too. Tunes and Dub came to a spot in Inglewood, <laughs> and man, I'm talking about a, like a movie scene. About four dudes hit us up. They like, boom, like. Hit us with the E-Ricket, like, y'all, oh, E-Rickets? I'm like, what? I said, no, nah, we here to uh, see Chili Chill. And one of the dudes said, oh, y'all here to see Chill? That's good. When you throw a name out there and they got respect for him, he said, hold up. I think one of the, no, we, I called you. Yeah. And he came down and got us. And uh, he said, no, nah, y'all, y'all good. I said, no, nah, we ain't good to I said, no, we you, ain't good until you come down here and yeah, get us, you man. Didn't, you didn't hear the conversation before. <laughs> man, they came, he came and got us. We went up. Uh, I forgot what we were working. We were working on something. Um, might have been the um, oh, yeah, Mad Circle, Circle, Circle album. Mad Circle album, yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit after a low profile. Yeah, and, 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 
and we got and when we let when we came back down, it was cool. They like, all right, man, you know, gotta you gotta say who you come to see. I was like, that's what I did. Yeah. But if if we would have threw the wrong name out there, man, I think they would have. Yeah, we wouldn't probably be having this conversation. Damn, they would have been on me for sure. So from from <clears throat> from when you first started producing, what was what in you know what what drove you, you know what was your inspirations into you know making the 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 sounds that you was making at that when you first started? Like what was what was your influences? I mean, really, me just loving <clears throat> music. Period. For me listening to music as a kid. Okay. On up. I mean, this, that's what, same thing what got me into DJing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, producing really wasn't that hard because it kind of ran hand in hand. Because you got to figure, okay, if you're on two turntables and if you can make two records and blend two records in together and take various different types of songs and blend them together right. to make it sound like one, mm-hmm. shouldn't be too hard to yeah, work true. a drum machine and blend in sounds yeah, that basically tie together and collaborate together. What's what, what's your perspective on the the now DJs and the now producers, meaning the ones that just got the name, not not that. See, you 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 studied your craft, you learned your craft, yeah. you know, and, and and you mastered your craft, but you got a lot of people that just now they want to master the name, DJ such and such, uh, you know, producer, whatever, yeah. but they just holding the name. Like, how do you look at the the now producers to when you was producing? Well, not was, excuse me, when you first started producing. Shit. The era. <laughs> shake my head to it like a lot of the veterans do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't understand the history and the skills that come into it, and a lot of them lack the skills. Same thing with a lot of DJs that you see. They can't DJ. They can't chase. They can't transform. They can't do none of that. So, you know, they, they don't know nothing about that. No, I, right. I, I think, too, the the old school I wouldn't even say old school the well you can old school Ooh. producers and DJs were more hands on yeah exactly. like now it's software like you got Fruity Loops yeah. uh, what is the other Logic Fruity Logic, Loops, yeah. Fruity Logic. and no reasons. yeah because even if you yeah. use the drum machine I remember you guys would actually <clears throat> have people come in and play live or yeah, exactly. you had you still had some type of music background to I, I don't know. I just had not saying I don't respect the mustards and the new producers, yeah. but I think the older producers and DJs were more hands on as far as creating. Because, I mean, we, we, we took the time like this is like this. Anybody that's going to come <clears throat> into any form of anything that had to do with the game, learn, learn the mm-hmm. game, study the craft. Right. Look at where it came from and where it started. Mm-hmm. If you don't do the research to do, that's like. Going to college or going to school, you have to research something. That's true. No, right. Why would you jump into something that you have no history on, or mm-hmm. well, you're not going to try to find out the history on what it is and what comes with That's the true. game? true. That makes no sense. And it, it really don't. It's because now, I mean, what makes sense to us don't make sense to nobody now. Nah. I mean, and and the, the crazy thing is, even even then, you know, growing up then, you had to know how to fight, not say you know how to fight. <laughs> exactly. You know, and exactly. then you had to prove it. <laughs> you know, right, you had right. to really prove it. If you was around, if you was gonna be around a group of individuals, well, we got to know you. You know how to fight. So exactly. if we're in the predicament, shit, we know what you're capable of doing. Same way with, with 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 producing and rapping. Certain MCs that was rapping back then, you made your Cole MC or whoever your boy was. You made him dope. Exactly. You know, you threw him in the pit. No, you're going to battle today. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Whether he wanted to or not. Well, you talk all this shit at the house. All right. Well, we're going <laughs> we gonna to throw you out there. Go ahead and freestyle. Exactly. And, and, you know, depending on the response, if he fucked up or if he did cool, that's what, what, what drove him more. And the, the, even, even going to the record stores, producers went and got records, yep. exactly. research records. You had to fuck up some records, exactly. you know, to... to now, yeah, you could just go to YouTube or wherever to get music. It's just, it's not that same feel. Well, see, at that time, it was no internet. Exactly. So we yeah, didn't exactly. have it. There wasn't no computers. There wasn't no Sorrow. We had to grind. We had to carry all them crates of records. and You know what I'm saying? No, right. Checking 1200 plus at the same time, it was more, we came from more creativity yeah, exactly. than what they have now. Everything's like set up for them to just yeah. do whatever they do, and they don't know nothing about the true right skills that you got to put into it. No, right. So no you creativity. Know, once you 
got your craft all the way together, linking up with Ice Cube. Kind of, you know, you linked up with Ice Cube, yeah. started doing production, got involved with the, you know, the lynch mob, that whole exactly. first generation of the, that whole movement after Cube left uh, NWA, yeah. NWA. So kind of, your trend, you know, how you got into that circle as far as doing, working with Cube and uh, Jinx. Well, we all uh, basically came through my, my homeboy, rest in peace, DJ Trasky. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was a K-Day mix master, uh, second string. Yeah, I remember too. Basically clink, linked me in mm-hmm. with Jinx. Mm-hmm. Me and Jinx started talking and clowning. We clicked up automatically from being DJs at the same time and doing it. And, of course, you know, for me seeing Q from being in, like, the little DJ battles and stuff like that, we used to run into each other. Yeah, and then they like, me still getting down, still, yeah. See each other and do all that, but basically Trey Ski connected that up. Rest in peace, and then Trey Jinx Ski. pulled it again. And then they had the little scenario with situation with <clears throat> Yo-Yo coming in mm-hmm. and doing that. It was the choice between, well, who's going to get down, who's going to be the DJ for who to do whatever. So, yeah. of course, Jinx was already doing his thing with Cube, for Cube. Yeah. So, automatically, that places me with Yo-Yo. Exactly. Mm. Because I, I definitely remember, you know, we would be in one side at Echo Sound. Yeah. And I remember Cube, uh, really pretty much that America's Most Wanted album, we were doing the, um, the uh, Mad Circle. Or was it yeah, low we profile? Were, well, was doing, like, well, at certain times it was a low profile. Yeah, we was yeah, doing was something and side. he was knocking out and we would come in on y'all session. Exactly. Because I remember when... Um, he sat by the basketball courts at Echo Sound, and yeah. he said the first verse to No Vaseline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, didn't have no idea that pretty much we didn't have no idea what, you know, the history that we were witnessing, exactly. you know, coming to Echo Sound. And exactly. that was before, you talking about before the death row and all that. Yeah. Man, we, we just seeing all that transpire was just I don't think none of us really just paid yeah. attention we were just going with the moment and exactly. really wasn't tripping off what it was we weren't looking at it how like fans would look at it exactly we looking at it we there and we just looking at hey we just with the homies so that's what that's when the, the thing. I think the best things come unexpected yeah when you like right now everybody have expectations of getting signed or getting mm-hmm. a deal or Exactly. And the love is not there because once they figure out they're not going to get a deal, then what? Exactly. They don't do no more music. They're a car salesman. Or, mm-hmm. You know, they working at the grocery store. It's not knocking those jobs, but if you if you in something, you're going to be in it. Yeah, well, you got to be. You got to be dedicated to everything that you do. You never quit. No, Regardless right. to who tell you what. Somebody can say you suck at this or you not that. You got to push, push, push yourself to the highest level. That also comes with studying the game, looking at your competition. Without doing that, and if you don't know anything about the game, you know, it, it's crazy. As you was DJing, when you was DJing, when you uh, was even D- when you DJing for Yo Yo, yeah. Um, what was your competition? Who did you who at that era in that era? Who did you feel your competition was? I really wasn't even tripping. We were just. From doing all that, because I mean, I used to practice with a Latin, me, a Latin, mm-hmm. Trey Ski, Ralph M, Battle Cat. Mm-hmm. We get out in the clown, Joe Cooley, you know what I'm saying? From Bobcat bringing it again, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bobcat. So that was, I mean, without really competing against them, that was basically your core competition. Yeah, from how we, yep. how we grew up. Exactly. Getting down Kept with your each skills other. up. Yep, all from Romeo and. <laughs> Jam and James and Ralph M and all of that. We all used to get down and just practice and make our skills tighter and better. So was it any – did you get any um, – how could you put – any flack or any type – was it any, like, stereotype – stereotyping by you being a DJ for a female rap artist? Nah. It was always all love. We got love everywhere we went. So. And you feel that was from just the nature of who y'all were? and what y'all was doing at the time? Or did you think they just... Because, you know, at that time, it was... i say it depended on who you came who you came with. Yeah, it was all about camps automatically. Yeah. So, who, I mean, who you came with, that that's when that stamp of approval, where well, they didn't even question it. Because exactly. you had other female rappers, mm-hmm. but, it you know, they didn't stick in. They didn't stay mm-hmm. because they wasn't attached to a certain... 
camp or exactly. and they felt like okay well and you know because and, and yo-yo was getting her buzz yeah at at that time too you know doing 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 uh uh high school shows and all exactly. kind of shit you know she exactly. was doing a lot of shit yeah she was. so it wasn't like her name went but once that attachment came exactly. it just made it even more you know more like, like a marriage basically no exactly exactly and it blew it up so automatically i mean from her being from the camp you look at okay nwa think about that nwa Mm. Think about how that contributed to the game, mm-hmm. and you look at all the members. Oh, you're right. So you're looking at even Ice Cube going solo, still being tied to NWA, still being tied to Easy, still being tied to Dre, still being tied to Yellow. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And Ren. But you know, I think what I respected <clears> a lot <throat> about Yo Yo, even though she was involved in that, she created her own movement own lane, too, yeah. IBWC, yeah. Intelligent yeah. Black Women's Coalition, and that caught her kind of took her to another level as far as with the females. She had a lot of female supporters. We're going to save that. uh, We got to go to a break. Tuned in to East Side Radio, Jazzy and Bam, and we got Chili Chill. We're going to go to this break. Yeah. West Coast. He's heavy crease, ready for a beat, so a must I carry heat. Always keep the cheek with whatever it is. I'm with it to the limit and ain't never getting sweet. I call a whole bitch and then still try to fuck. And anytime I pull out my steel, I'm a dump. I live for the set and die for respect. Pocket full of chips from the line that I press. Insane in my heart and it's signed in my flesh. Considering my image, I'm the pride of the West. Yes, nine when I step on the 40 Glock banger. Repping this aggressive, this a part of my gangster. Doing plenty. And dirt pushing hard for 21st. Cost for every loss, opposition, get it worse. Position on the turf, I'm a five star general. Crippin' since birth, so my reach right. like 10. I'm a beast on the streets, I'm a hog in the hood. Check trippin' on these parts, cause it ain't no good. I'm from the wild, wild west, where we known the burn. Put tips on the nigga like it ain't no thing. I got work, 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 work
changed to like some started off some good, you know, doing what it was doing to right. just man, I of spent out of control. I mean, we had what like the K days when they said the whack of the track it, you know, Jazzy. Damn, <clears throat> whack of the track it. Thursday night live, Friday night live. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Big master show. Plus none of the other, none of the artists sound the same. Right. Now you turn the radio now, every artist sound the same. It's like everybody's following what the next person doing instead of trying to be lead. Right. Yeah, no, trying no, to be in their own lane. No creativity. No, at all. That's from the that's from the um, the directors, the machine directors. Yeah, exactly. So anytime you give it to the corporations and you let the corporations control something, it's no longer yours. So you have basically, I, I look at it like this: we lost <clears throat> ownership of our own shit. No. It, we lost ownership, so it's like the only way you can get that is to get it back to like it's supposed to be. You got to start owning shit again. But you, you, you know, also chill when, when we were doing what we were doing back in the day. It was more like Rodney O and Joe Cooley performing at the Casa. Yeah, exactly. We would all posse up and we would go. Yeah, we supported each other. We wasn't other. tripping about being on the guest list and all that, mm-hmm. even though a lot of times they, you know, but we weren't going with the intent to be put on the guest list. We would exactly. go and support. Exactly. Uh, Africa, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Egyptian Love It, we, mm-hmm. we all supported each other. Exactly. You know, if NWA was doing something, we, yeah, we supported. King T, you know, exactly. we, I remember, it wasn't no, oh, I ain't going, I don't mess with them. Mm-mm. It wasn't, I mean, even though I see it kind of changing a little bit now, yeah. but but it, the unity that we had was so much more powerful, man. We we wasn't, in co- even though it was a friendly competition, we supported each other. Exactly. It was all love. So we was happy to see another yeah. person do that. So when we right. saw Ice-T, I was happy to yeah, see Ice-T exactly. pushing and clowning. So he represented where we represented, where we came from. Because yeah, we all was at the water, the bush. Yep, cool. Yeah, all that. All that. Well, a lot of United uh, Nations, all mm-hmm, that. Exactly. The, the artists then... You know, they they just had a more humble respect yeah. and then a pride with their craft. Now, as soon as the artist get a little bit of notoriety, he a superstar. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's you know, it's you can't even you can't even get in touch with him when he got a show. Mm-hmm. You hit him up, shit, he's sending you the voicemail or now he got a secretary. It's it's gonna be something. And I mean, not signed, just got a little bit of YouTube buzz. Exactly. Oh, they they superstars now. See in the you know, j- just like you said, everybody supported everybody. You mm-hmm. see what what I liked even back then. Everybody was you. You could look. You could just look at the pictures mm-hmm. from back in the day. Yeah. Everybody knew what everybody was doing mm-hmm. from West Coast to East Coast. Exactly. But if you was out on the West Coast and you was an artist, you was gonna know pretty much everybody in that same Chitlin circuit. Yeah, of right. course. Vice versa on the East Coast. You know, you just looking at, you know the. Even with the women, that unity, it came and went. Yeah. And then it's like, damn, like, you know, because, like, right now, women need another woman figure, yeah. not a Nicki Minaj. No. Nah. Don't get me wrong. She doing entertainment. Yeah. That's entertainment. But it's not uplifting the way every every everything that's uplifting us or we do something that's uplifting us, they give it, once it gets so much power, they see who who's the biggest person in that in that whole unified, you know, uh, structure. Yeah. Grab them out exactly and get them a role. Yeah, they infiltrate. So it's like, oh no, you got to prevent them from infiltrating, and you got to stick and stay true to what it is that you believe in. Because once you do that, then I mean, the powers of being the machine got you, and that's basically what we looked at that happened to the entertainment industry. Yeah. They allowed it to be overturned and took. And, 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 you know, we had a true, we didn't have a misconception of the fan. It was more because then, you know, you had uh, uh, fan clubs. Yeah. Now the fan clubs are social media. Exactly. And a total misconception of a fan and a follower. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talked uh, on one of our shows about the Soldier Boy situation. Soldier Boy had millions of followers. Mm-hmm. His album come out that first week didn't do 150, 200,000. Nah. That's because fans are not followers. Mm-hmm. Followers are not fans. If you got a fan, that fan is going to get in the car, come to your show, exactly. buy your merchandise, exactly. you know, and and interact with you. Mm-hmm. You know, these people, oh, I got you got some guys that have the audacity to get arrogant cuz they got 20,000 Fan, I mean followers. <laughs> exactly. 
you don't have the, the those 20,000 people could care less about you. Mm-hmm. It's all about numbers and what Instagram looks good or Twitter looks good. But exactly. none of those people are going to go buy one thing of yours. I know. So, but, well, you know, that's why when we were doing it, we were at, you know, Kate, uh, Rory, Rory Kaufman. Yeah. He used to do the little K-Day stuff, and we was doing it, interacting with people. It's like, well, I mean, you got to interact with people. You got to interact with your fans. If you don't do that, then mm-hmm. come on, man. Yeah, it's 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 sad because it's like everybody thinks something is gonna come easy. Nah, it's work. gonna come, e- you know, and and that's it. Hard work. See, that's just like the the cats. Now, don't get me wrong. You got you got managers. Somebody, uh, uh, homegirl put a post up talking about everybody want to be rappers now. Everybody is rappers. So I commented on their post and said, No, they don't. Everybody want to be managers and CEOs. <laughs> See, everybody is a manager now. Everybody is a CEO. Yeah. Everybody got their own record label. Yeah. Everybody got their own clothing line. Yeah. I mean, motherfucker put two letters on a T-shirt. That he got a clothing line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, I'm you know I'm CEO of yep. two-letter right. clothing. Yeah, he want this shit to be in the same <laughs> category as somebody that's been in the game. Nike. No, and, fifty and, years. And and that that's the that's the. That's the misconception because people feel just because they've been doing it for six months, they mm-hmm. supposed to get the same notoriety as somebody that's been doing it for sixteen years. I mean, it's the same thing when you look at the actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. Remember when they was protesting and all exactly. that, and then you, before all the reality shows just really kicked in and took over. You right. Uh, you know, there's no way a reality show start not taking nothing away from them, but you know they should not be on the same level as a Denzel Water. They shouldn't even be able to be in the same room with yeah. Hell no. But it's that machine that created. Yeah, exactly. See, when you create a misconception, you deceive people to believe what's really not. Exactly. You got uh, uh, actors and actresses that went to school for their craft. Oh, no, right. Like That's like me saying I'm a doctor. This guy that went to school 13 years, and here <laughs> it is. I say I'm a doctor, and I come in, I feel like I'm disrespecting they craft. You would be. A real knowledgeable person feels that way. Like me, I'm a real manager. Yeah, you know, exactly. That. And in this one, uh, him, uh, Dub, I remember having a conversation with him when I was rapping. You like, remember, you like yeah. jazz, man. You should really. I thought managing was like being a babysitter. But then I learned, I, I started asking questions. You know, when we, me and Toons used to go up to Quincy Jones' house, I would ask Quincy a bunch of questions. Yeah. He would answer in a, you know, roundabout way, but he was letting me know, like, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to give you the game. You got to learn the game. Exactly. But uh, we got a caller. Uh, what's up, caller? You tuned in to East Side Radio. G. Lou. What up, what up? You already know it's G. Lou. Man. <laughs> uh, what up, G. Lou? My Afternoon boy. Cracking, homie. What's going on, man? Yeah. Hey, it's all love. I had to, I had to uh, call in. You know, you got the legendary Chili Chill up in there. So I had yeah. to call in and pay my respect to Chili Chill. You know, all that you've done, homie. Definitely, definitely a West Coast legend, hip-hop, period. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I'm tuning in to the discussion, and I'm uh, everything you guys said so far is on point. I want to know, with all that being said about the industry, like you said, chill, chill, how, how it was taken away from us, you know, no ownership. What, what, what do you think we can do now as far as the hip-hop community, you know, old cats and the newer cats to maybe bring that back? Me personally, I think it's great that shows like this, this is a start, you know, mm-hmm. uh, getting the information and the knowledge out there and then having uh, guests as, as yourself on here. But what do you think? As a whole, the people out here in the public can do, and people that love hip hop, to maybe try to bring that back and connect the old with the new, because it's definitely a uh, disconnection. You know what I mean? Um, with with thoughts, you know, from the old cats, you know, and the newer cats. The newer cats may think they're doing it right. The old cats, you know, we know most of them are not. You know, so Gotta take it back to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Back to the basics, and more people need to start. As you know, as well as myself on down the line, Jazzy, all that, we all need to start speaking up and right, pulling right. in more people to speak out more to teach the new casters coming into the game. Because if right, they're not right. being taught, then it's like you lost. It's like you, you got a whole put just took a whole bunch of little kids and put them in the woods and just walked away from them. Mm-hmm. So they right. don't know that's, what to that's, do. I think that's a problem. But how do we talk to them without, you know, a lot of times today it's like you try to talk to them in the automatic thing talking down on them or hating because you're not agreeing with what they're doing. You're trying to tell them something, but you know, a lot of kids today, they don't like to listen. Well, you just got you know? to come at them on their level and get at them on their level on what they like. You right. can't just come in and just smash them. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so you got to kind of tiptoe around the situation and get in and, you know, see where their heads are at. 
again right. on on their level and go to their level then hit them with a little information and see how they react to it and if they react to it positively you keep hitting them hmm. keep hitting them hitting right. them hitting them and just let them know you know it's not a disrespect nobody's trying to smash them or talk down to them mm-hmm. you're giving them some information that they need you know and then tell them to go hey you know do some research Check this right. out. Hit this site. Hit that site. I mean, the same thing Jazzy be trying to help a lot of people to. Yeah. You know, to teach you about your publishing, teach you about your mechanicals, teach you about foreign royalties and how to negotiate contracts and, you know, what to be right. in the game, how to, you know, basically have ownership of your stuff. Hmm. Respect right. the game and respect others and stay in your own lane at the same exactly. time. And that's basic. Yeah, I think you said the most important thing <clears throat> respect your respect others and stay in your lane. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Much love, man. I'm not going to take up too much time. I just wanted to uh, ask that and uh, show, show respect to you, Chili Chill. No, much love, man. man. I appreciate you calling in. Jazzy. Cheap Lou. All, all love. All got love. You, man. All love, gentlemen. Man, all right. Hey, Bam, I need I need that computer, too, man. I'm waiting <laughs> on that. <I'm... laughs> I got Let's you, man. I'm, I'm about to shoot the video to it, so I got you. Shoot me an exclusive or something, homie. I need that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. That's my right. word. And right. you know, right. you know what's crazy too. I, I'm, I know I can't speak for all of the cats that've been in the game as long as us, but when I bumped my head, I learned. <laughs> a lot of these youngsters now they want to continuously bump their head. Like, no disrespect to DJ Unknown. You know, I signed with Techno Hop Records early in the '80s. Yep. Little young dude, you know, uh, had the opportunity to travel without joining the military the way I was traveling. Exactly. And I didn't know nothing about publishing. I didn't know any. I didn't care about copywriting my music. But once I start being approached and people questioning me about it, I said, it looks like I better learn. Exactly. This. And I learned it. And now, you know, I try. I used to try to share it, but share with those that want to get it exactly. and then those that run from it. No, right. Don't chase right. it. Only those that want to receive. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's crazy, man. You got more than 80 Ninety percent of these youngsters that produce and send full beats to <laughs> artists through the email. And they just rob. We them. didn't. We wouldn't think about doing that. <laughs> you know. But see, but see, you got see, you got to think about it. Even me being in the middle mm-hmm. to where I, I know before my time, yeah. Right after my time, on up to now, and you know, being in between mm-hmm. both both spectrums of it, mm-hmm. you look at it now. You get in this business, when you get into the business side of it, you're getting into it to make money. Yeah. That's the business. Exactly. But when you when you uh, dedicated to your craft, you learn in the business. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. learn it all the way up until, you know, you got people that want tomorrow money, and then you got people that 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 ain't worried about tomorrow money. They wait until the next year money. Mm-hmm. Because once they get to that year mark, Shit, they done learned so much stuff to once they start making money, they going to know how to, you know, maintain it. Longevity. Yeah, they going to know how to maintain it. But if you get that tomorrow money, once you get it and you lose it, you don't know what to do with it. Exactly. And it's still people, you know, it's a lot of the 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 the, the, the G's that's in the game. It's some G's in the game that's G's by default. Yep. You know, they not really G's because they really, you know, uh, teaching us and and a lot. They just there because they got to that platform, but they not giving the the respect and the royalties to those who got them there. Exactly. And they brainwashing a lot of. So you got you got a lot of them brain brainwashing the. You know, young cats, hey, look, man, don't worry about selling your beats yeah, right exactly. now. Just send them to as many artists as you yep. can. Exactly. That's the wrong information. Like, that's, yeah. you know, that that's kind of, you know, but they doing that, and you got to think about it. Somebody like yourself come in, and you tell somebody something. Now you got that person that's connected with a person, with one of the artists from your era that's, that's, that's you know, still doing their thing, but already brainwashed them. Yep. So now it's going to look like you hating Exactly. exactly. You, you know what I mean? Because that, that's what it is right now. The ones that know and wasn't, you know, prone to bending over to the industry, mm-hmm. you know. Exactly. Those the ones that look like, oh, well, he just mad because he ain't fucking with such and such. Exactly. Or he mad because he not on right now. Yeah. W- what is your definition of being on? Exactly. Well, on that note, a lot of people will get kind of mad at me if. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> like if I'm pretty sure they get mad at Jazz. Oh, yeah, all at the, the time. Same time. 
you know, for us giving our information. A lot of people tell, man, you giving up million dollar information. Why would you do that? And because it doesn't feel good to get fucked over, man. No, for real, it's not a good feeling. When you don't know something, and it's like all of us started by coming in because we have love mm -hmm. for music. No, right. So we wasn't really tripping off the money. It was cool once we started seeing money being added on to it. That made it better. Mm -hmm. Right, But right. we wasn't tripping. We was doing this for free. No, because right. It's something we loved to do, and it kept us out of trouble, kept us out the streets. And everybody's sharing. a lot sharing. of us from catching cases. And, no, right. You know what I'm saying? So you basically Save sharing, a lot of lives. sharing different stories, too, because yeah. you had a person on this side of Compton. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. The other person on this side of Compton. Exactly. exactly. And didn't know Pretty much, yeah. and didn't know each other, yeah, yeah. but yeah. buzzing and exactly. sharing similarities and stories that they didn't really know about and wouldn't have known about mm -hmm. if it wasn't broadcast through the music. I mean, music brought a lot of people Man, together, you know, brought in right. crips and bloods and everything, I, that's, everything. That's what I loved about it At because I was rapping at a club called the Radiotron. Yep. It was the radio first, but you talking about eight trays, yep. 30s, exactly. 40s, 60s. I mean... They would come, the, the young people that lived in that area, exactly. they would come, man, and, and, and it was crazy because when they came in there, it's almost like the bike movement, the Harleys. Oh, right, right. They, they come together, no, even though you might see somebody you normally would have a problem with, yeah. we came in there, man, no problem. Mm -mm. And my thing, too, it goes back to us supporting each other, too. You know, people came in there. Ice-T would come in there and get down. Yep. You know, pretty much everybody that was popping would come to that spot. Mm -hmm. I don't Animation. feel we have a spot like that no more, though. No, we don't. We don't. Shit. What do you mean? You don't we feel? Don't. We yeah. don't. You we know don't. why? Because yeah. the promoter stepped mm -hmm. in. Exactly. The promoter, who was, who was the promoter back then? Uncle you know? Jam's Army. Uh, mm -hmm. It was quite a few. But no, but, no, but, but, but what, what, what I mean by promoter... Mm -hmm. The the promoters back then knew you knew knew oh, you. Yeah, yeah, they you did. You know what I mean? Now we interacted. Now they just going off what they feel they hear yeah. and who they feel is buzzing. Yeah. Exactly. So that's who I'm a that that's who I'm a but you gotta look at it. What nobody like I say, you'll have somebody doing shows mm -hmm. Ice T, yeah, like you say, or, yep. or, or dub or or cube. You know, they doing shows in spots that you wouldn't normally oh, now, yeah, man. now uh, uh, artists like I say, artists get on the radio right now. His song just get on the radio right now. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, this motherfucker want to charge thirty five hundred yeah, for a show and think he Ice Cube. <laughs> I think he's a you know. And, 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 I charge I charge five thousand. Man, a you show. ain't lying. It goes back to the misconception <laughs> of like the uh, Instagram and 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 Facebook. It's no more going and and p posting up a. Uh, 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 you know, hand in hand combat with the flyers and interacting with your fans and stuff. They don't do that no more, man. They interacting on social media. <laughs> exactly. You know, man, we were out grind getting on the bus, going to shows, yeah. and the bus stopped at two in the morning. You had to walk home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's, really showing it that that's what you wanted. But now that 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 internet gives, you got dudes on there. We talk about it all the time. Uh, 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 posing in, in, in other people's cars, other people's mm -hmm. jewelry, holding money, holding their life savings in their <laughs> hand, and then had a nerve to tell up and coming cats, you if you keep grinding, you can get you not even you don't you don't have that. I just can't get down like that, man. And all uh, smoke and mirrors. It's, no, it's exactly. just what it is. <laughs> so when you when you was grinding, even though, you know, it's a I mean, in this career it's a continuous grind. Yeah, but at 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 your at your peak of grinding, did it even feel like you was grinding? Mm. To a certain degree, yeah. In a certain degree, it's just something that was natural. That was mm -hmm. that was already yeah. in you. So yep. it, it it was just a part of your routine. Exactly. Now, what was some of your distractions if you had any? The game changing. So did it make you want to fall back from the game or just, you know, look at a whole nother uh, aspect <clears throat> of the game, get into something else other than music? Like, No, I mean, I, I stuck with it because, you know, naturally it is what it is. So I stay true to it. So what, what made— How to make you look at the game sideways, though? No, and by you being, because, I mean, shit, you know, when, when it get like that, you the eyeball. Yeah. So by you being by yourself— uh, uh, shit, predominantly majority of the time. <laughs> what made you just stick in it and say, you know what, I I'm whether people fuck with me or don't fuck with me or fuck with this sound or don't fuck with this sound or fuck with what I do or not, <coughs> what made you just, what is it that kept you going? 
shit from the history and from everything that that I already created and from the stepping stones that I already made. So why would I allow something else to chase me out the game? Yeah. So, you know, based on my experience, and, and you know, we've we been in this game a while together and, you know, separately, uh, what what got me more serious about it is when I learned how to fill out a split sheet, understood what copywriting was. Oh, yeah. All those years that I was involved in music, I was just happy to get off my street and then come back and tell my little homies my story, like going to another place outside of South Central, and they come back because I know half of them dudes, God bless them, they not even here no more. They used to love me to come come back. Oh, yeah. Even when I used to rap on K-Day every Friday, they like, man, how's it feel going up there? They was, I was the superstar, hmm. but it came back to I'm leaving my house. I'm sacrificing from spending time with my family. I'm, I'm missing family reunions, and I'm broke. So I started learning the business because I got I, – I, I was really the, ready to walk away from it, and I even had got me a job. But I said once I learned the business side, I said, oh, there is a revenue stream in this because I was getting – I'm thinking everybody that we was bumping into was <coughs> robbing us. But yeah. once I learned the game, they presented paperwork to me. Exactly. And I signed it without reading it. And then once I start understanding a contract is a negotiable piece of work, mm -hmm. didn't nobody do me wrong. Yeah, which we all. We all. Yeah, so I got mad at close friends, but they, their job was to present that paperwork to me. At the bottom of that contract, it said, get the, yeah, exactly. uh, uh, Shondell Rosa acknowledges, and it, you know, mm -hmm. it told me to go get representation. Yeah, exactly. I had a friend managing me that did not have, that's my fault. Yeah. We quick to go bad on the person that give us the faulty paperwork when it states get professional exactly. you advice. know, representation or advice. Yeah. And it's a negotiable piece of work. That means you negotiate before you sign it. Right. But we quick to want to beat up on the person that presented it to us, the labels, <laughs> the managers. So once I learned it, I just took it upon myself to say, I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm a schooler. Even with that, I had to learn the hard way because people still don't want. You could tell somebody don't go down that street and go left with all that red on or that blue on. They say, you know what? I hear him saying that, but I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets smashed yeah. on. So, how how do you feel, or, or what's what's your what's your what's your take on when producers or DJs are being mentioned, and you're not in that category? Or you're not in that d topic of discussion when when the producers that they get a notoriety to um, are inbox producers and 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 you know what I mean by inbox they just you know they they one they they just one way they sound when you can depict the sound of a producer not saying that it's not a good producer but it's like okay what next you know yeah. all right I I, I hear that. But from you to do, you know, production from, you know, uh, Ike Turner, Public Enemy, Corn, like you got different yep. spectrums See. of of artists, different different type <coughs> of artists, and you yeah. didn't stay in the box. You was outside of the box. How do you feel when you're not mentioned in those, you know, uh, topics? If it's any feeling, got a whole. Don't. Oh, go ahead. We got to go to. You can, oh, you can finish it. Go on. We got, oh, okay. we got a break, but we was going to a break, but go on and answer that question, man. My bad. You know, I, I I look at it, and I don't really, you know, you look and you trip off of it, but just keep it moving. I mean, I, I know what I'm capable of doing, just like I know what I brought to the game, you know? So all you can do is just say, just keep it moving. Mm. Keep it moving and keep smashing and, you know, just plot and plan for your next move. We're going to come back. We're going to have Chill's Top 5. Who is Chill's Top 5 when we get back on Eastside Side Radio? Radio. <laughs> <laughs> See, I 
ride like a SS When school's in session, I'm popular with the best dress I ain't just hood, when I step out, I stay fresh This underground music, I know I'm one of the BZs Fix they mirrors and pump they brakes Cause they tryna watch every fucking move I make Just stay out my way, I hit the hole like the bus Retire, you look in the eyes of the distrust I ain't no fool, loose lips, sink ships Gotta lock down on my hustle like vice grips City by the sea, still a city full of crips And the haters can't stand that I roll like this Two fingers stroll like this And everywhere I go it's black and gold like this Hit you with a fist with my deuced out demeanor You better be prepared when you're stepping in my arena So I gotta let you know I Business, man. I don't just talk it, I walk it, I live it. Post a nigga up without switching up on my pivot. When go out of the streets, I cherish it like Gizzo. Bitch niggas foul me, I make it up at my free throws. Wanna play the game? Well, I play to win. Call yourself grown men full of estrogen. Cause of the bitchy ass ways and the things bitches say. Come out your mouth and you're thinking it's okay. See, I ride like this for a purpose. Shut that shit down, have your ass clocking out, not working. Hit you where it hurt in your pockets. Ain't no supporting your movement, so you really need to stop it. Grind, hustle hard for the profit. Everywhere I go, this long beat, so it ain't no stopping it. That's why I let you know I'm. Yeah, we yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like off the point guard of the street EP. Y'all go pick that up. Dope. iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, your mama backseat. <laughs> 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 trust me, it's been a lot of places. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I ain't saying I put it there, but trust me. <laughs> it's there. You know what I mean? But, uh, man, we uh, we sitting here having some good game conversation with uh, Chili Chill. Chili Chill. And um, I mean, you 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 come from an era where artists really had to prove themselves. They really had Definitely. to write. They really had to know how to freestyle. And uh, you know, just looking at it now, how do you look at how do you look at rappers that call themselves artists with well joining them together, saying they are rap artists without even you know tapping into their artistry. Cause you know you you got a lot of them right now. How you feel like about an artist that you know you tell them to freestyle, but they freestyle something they wrote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look at I don't look at them at all. Don't think too much, man. It's like you're not looking at them as a real artist. Now, that it, that to me, you know? yeah. You just you, you rapping. You you you, you rapping. You are you entertaining? You, know, because you can't. Where, where we come from and where I come from, you can't respect that. No, oh, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the, and the, just the, the the sad parts of it is when you comment or you even, you know, give your opinion on these type of things, it, it's, it's fucked up when a person will look at you as being a hater. Yep. Every individual, any individual that speaks out on something that's right. Like if you sit there and you study your rap to the point to where you freestyle that rap, that you're not freestyling. Mm-mm. You no. you you're not freestyling at all. I mean that that right there, you disrespecting the game in a whole right there when somebody say freestyle, and you free you 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 rap something that you wrote. You, and now you, you rapping exactly. And you know what, Bam? That comes <clears throat> back from the teachers not teaching them. That's just like exactly. the mixtape game. Exactly. A mixtape is a rapper rapping over previously released instrumentals. Exactly. And today, a rapper is rapping over original music, making songs, making albums, making EPs, making singles on original music, and they depreciate the value of the music by calling it a mixtape. It goes back to buying exactly. that Mercedes Benz from the Mercedes Benz dealership, bringing it home, popping all the emblems off of it, and putting Honda Accord on it. <laughs> we doing that to our music. Yeah. Why in the world would you rap over original music, original production, and then get paid for artwork, pay for features, pay for production from a producer, and call it a mixtape? 
And I know now they say mixtapes is industry standard. But the thing is, it goes back to them not being trained or taught the uh, the right way. No, it's industry <coughs> standard <coughs> because yeah, that yeah. industry wants you to come fully equipped, mm-hmm. fully prepared, and develop yourself. Because they don't want to have to pay for it. Exactly. So no pay all, no it. more artist development. That don't well, even exist. Well, you got to think about it. Now you're... The artists are their own artist development yep, yep, because right. if 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 you dumb enough to pay for something <laughs> and put your heart and soul into something and pay for it to get produced and everything mixed, mastered, and give it away, then that's the that you know because the industry will try to make you think that's what you need to exactly. do. Exactly. So exactly. you finna spend thousands of dollars to promote your shit for free. Well, I mean, it's like if, if you gonna sell, if you gonna sell, put yourself for sale for free. Company is not gonna care about that. Yeah, no, but exactly. Yeah, and then how do you put sale in front of free? They do that. You selling yeah, free? Exactly. Like that, that's like I want a chili cheese dog with no chili or cheese. Then you want a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, the, the, but you but, have you, you you do have them. No, I, 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 I know. Pull up because, and say, yeah, let me get a, some chili cheese fries with no chili. <laughs> Motherfucker, ask for some cheese fries. (laughs) And and it goes back to you got gospel, jazz, blues, rock and roll, Mm -hmm. uh, 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 R&B. R&B that's not motivated by hip hop. I mean, but why are all those genres of music generating revenue with unknown artists? You got rock and roll artists that never been on the radio, that's never done a mixtape. Jazz, blues, gospel, it goes back to the ignorant genre of music where we feel like in order for us to be successful, we got to give away. Now, I I, I believe, okay, give away a single. Mm -hmm. The life expectancy for a mixtape in 2016 is 24 hours. So you take two months to make this project that you're going to give away for free, but the reality of it is mixtapes are only good for 24 hours. Your family, the friends that you have, exactly. they're going to pay attention that first 24 hours. And if you're not a Nipsey or exactly. upscale artist that's putting money behind, and people don't realize yeah. those artists still put their mixtape on a digital platform for sale, even though they're putting it on a free platform. Exactly. Exactly. So that's business. Mm-hmm. You but, give away a few, but there's going to be some stragglers that are buying. Exactly. Well, they, I mean, that's, it, fine. It, that's true. Fine. Exactly. If you have a following, just like how you said mm-hmm. in the different genres, you got to look at it. Even country. Yeah. Gospel. Yep. You got to look at blues. Fred Hammond with platinum before he even touched the radio. Exactly. Never heard of him or not. But hey, in that in that gospel world, they have mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's the respect. man, And, and, and that, that's just a, a lot of a lot of what a. Uh, my question is too, even even to y'all, like mm-hmm. where did the where did the respect where did the respect get lost at? You know, because it, even like you know, <laughs> we know it's a disconnection. You know, youngsters don't want it; they feel they ain't gotta listen to no old heads. You know, the old heads feel like I ain't finna, you know, talk to them knuckleheads. You know, it, it, it's like that, but it's like it's 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 pride issues with certain individuals as well. Oh, I ain't gonna talk to him. Oh, fuck it, I ain't gonna talk. He too, you know. When when all it is, the the main thing we lacking is conversation. Well, when people stop caring, that's what's all to fall off. And and you know, I'm born in the '60s, the ninth, you know, the '60s. Mm-hmm. So I come up in the era of the each one teach one. Exactly. And you know, I'm glad that I came. So I witnessed the '60s music, '70s, exactly. '80s, '90s. Exactly. So exactly. I got an advantage. <clears throat> but exactly. it's crazy because you look at it from a street perspective. The youngsters, even the streets and the gangs, don't. Uh, it used to be the G's. Yeah, something go down, they meet in the park exactly. and they strategize. No, we're not gonna retaliate. We gonna exactly. now. These youngsters don't respect they so called G's, and they do that in the music and they do it in the streets. The, the, the youngsters feel like, why should I respect my G when I sold him drugs? Exactly. You know. Well, you got. Well, Chill just said it too mm-hmm. when. Uh, when you stop caring, yeah, and stop and caring. and 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 the biggest the biggest part of that is, you got to think about it. As far as neighborhoods, communities, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, just mm-hmm. like okay, you had the incident, right. boom, you you put you threw chill name out there, mm-hmm. it was oh okay cool. See, we knew people. Mm-hmm. Even even if even if I didn't grow up with chill, and I I know people in his area. 
Man. You still gonna know if I can't get exactly. in touch with him, I get in touch with somebody exactly. that knows. Exactly. And, then, and, and and you can dissolve, you know, you can you can resolve a whole lot of situations. But now don't nobody know each other no more. They don't. Because you, you shit, when you, you go to the funerals now and you you, you realize that you can to yeah, a lot of them. To You're certain right. people. Mm-hmm. And that's the same way with the music. Everybody know everybody, but it's it's still somebody in there, you know, you got people that's trying to be uh, uh, you know, cutthroat. Yeah. You know, they'll fuck with all three of us, but in a different form. But don't want to let us know that yeah. they all fucking with us. That yeah. they fucking with us all. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get that all the time with some of the. Uh, I'll post something real serious. You know, I like dropping that game <laughs> instead of this person that may be cool with this person and the person that feel like, dang, Jazzy, he just too much. He'll DM me and yeah. say what he want to say, but he won't. Post yeah. the comment to be seen, and I he said, don't you want know, people to see that he that he rocking with, with me yeah. or he agree nah. with it. Yeah, so it you know. <laughs> so what you got going on now, Chill? Like what 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 do Chill got going on at this present day? This 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 era of the uh, music game. What what is it you got going on? Well, I mean, besides just working on <clears throat> on a Lynch Mob project. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and that's cool. We tying in a reality show and a movie. That's connected that's to cool. it. Oh, that's dope. Also, I got a um, cable channel. That's cool. Okay. That I'm getting on called Chill TV. Oh, that's dope. That's cool. She's putting that up. And that broadcast in like 105 different countries. That's cool. So okay. pulling all that together. So is, is, is that your platform? Do you feel that's your platform to speak on the untold? Yeah, all of that. All of that and to teach at the same time and bring in. People as yourself, man, Jazzy, and you know all my people and all my love. I'm with it. No, oh, see that that and anybody else that basically I can help. That's what it's all about. When you when you look at artists, uh, you know, even when you producing, what is it that you look at, or how do you even uh, uh, structure your your music to certain artists, or do you? Is it a certain you know? Do you need to know something about that artist? How how do you make Beats for artists. How do you produce, excuse me, for artists? I look at their dedication and their will and their structure on, you know, their writing skills, all of that, but basically mm. their dedication to the game mm. and how far yeah. they want to go with it. That's the Because, you know, artists be kind of flaky sometimes. Yeah, no, they, no, you're right. And they'll let you down. No, you, you're damn right. They Some of them it. not trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? They can't ride with it as soon as you see a dollar or a check, they finna run over there, and you know, they a lot of them are not loyal. You have a lot who are, but you have a lot who are not loyal. Well, uh, like let the fans know how they can uh, get in contact, get in contact with you, and, and follow you, and stay in tune with what you got with any future endeavors. You know, from from this point on. OG Chili Chill at Twitter, OG Chili Chill Facebook, www.chillychill.net. There you have it. And uh, the ones that have uh, spelling difficulties, C-H-I-L-L-Y. C-H-I. L-L. And the Chili Chill. Yeah, so it's, some it's, people it's, it's, it's a the, lot of fake ones, man. Yeah, because some yeah. people put the I <clears throat> instead exactly. of Y. But, it's uh, a lot of fake ones. There's only one Chili Chill. Yeah. Tuned Thanks, in to Eastside Radio. Y'all be locked in next week. Another Sunday. We're going to be here again, and y'all go get that Point Guard of the Streets EP out right now. iTunes, iHeartRadio, and all over your uh, internet radio. And follow Jazzy at Jazzy Management. Peace. Oh, Talk yeah. Eastside Radio. All day long. <laughs> West Coast, thanks for having me. I was raised in a different way When I wake up in the morning it's a different day And things ain't always what it seems They got a polyester vision with a cotton ball dream Y'all not on my team, I'm on my own I see the whole court run the one man zone Point guard of the streets, I pass the ball Gotta play selfish so I don't pass at all Things done change, feeling like the matrix Rap game ain't so easy to make it My soul still here, it ain't easy to tip me Seem like the West Coast fighting for a Quincy Jones gotta pick a bone for the deal Bend over and you will get the keys to the bitly They put it out there, we all see the real A lot of rappers like to get their ego stroked In this game we play, game we play Snow, we are not the same